Hi, my name is Stormy Peters, and I'm going to be talking about how to have a disagreement with your loved one. Um, in particular, I'm thinking of the political climate over the past year. Um, in our household, we have very one strong Republican and very one strong Democrat. And we also have families that are on both sides of the spectrum. And so I'm going to share some of the things I've learned over the past year about how to have those difficult conversations um, and still um, maintain your relationship with your loved ones. So the number one tip that I have for everybody, the, the, the phrase that changed my life, um, and I hope it changes yours, is that if I were you, I would do the same thing. So if, if I were you, and I had the same background that you have, and I got to the same schools that you had, and I had the same friends as you did, and I had the same awesome praise from teachers, and I had the same bullying experiences on the playground, if I were you, um, and I read the same newspaper this morning, and I had the same conversation in the hallway, I would make the same decision that you made. Like if I were you, I would make the same decision. And so if you come from that point of view, everybody is rational within their own set of experiences and their own set of abilities. And so you have to like, if you come from that point of view, that you need to understand what it means to be them so you can understand what it means to make that decision and perhaps what piece of information you could offer to like maybe influence that. Um, you, you could change things, but you first have to seek to understand. So if you're trying to discuss something that's pretty difficult with your loved ones, I have um, four tips I'd like to share with you today. After the, if I were you, I would make the same decision you did after you got past that. If that's the only thing you get, that's great. But after you get past that, I have four, four tips for you um, to think about today. There's probably more later. The first one is to lose the anger. Like if you are still really angry about this decision and you are going to bring a lot of emotion and a lot of anger, like you just really can't believe that Trump won and you're so mad that anyone could have voted for him, not the time to have this conversation. I don't know what you have to do to get over it. It's probably a topic for a whole nother discussion too. The first probably 10 conversations, probably 20 conversations are not about changing their mind. Like you may desperately want them to vote for the politician that you think is the one that should have won or the one you think should win. Um, but the conversation can't be about changing their mind. The conversation has to be about understanding why they think that candidate's important or why they think that position is important. Um, and, and in my experience, most people vote one way or the other based on a couple of issues. The first one was lose the anger or don't don't have this conversation while you're feeling angry. The second one um, was to make sure that you don't try to change their mind, at least not in the first 20 conversations. Maybe in the 21st conversation you could change their mind, but that's really not the goal. The goal is to understand why, they, why they're at where they're at. Um, and then I have two more points. Um, the third one is try to do this one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so try to do this just you and the other person who you know you disagree with. Because the minute you put a third or a fourth person in, you suddenly have a whole bunch of different opinions. And the other person might agree with you on some things, might agree with them on some things. And the dynamic just gets really different and it's really hard to like control the flow of conversation to make sure that it doesn't get emotional. Like if you're going to have a difficult conversation, I highly recommend it's like you and one other person. Um, the more elements you add into it, the, the harder it is going to be to stay non angry and, and kind of on topic. Um, so keep it, keep it simple. You and the other person, preferably no alcohol, maybe like half a glass of wine if that helps you, but like, you know, you and one other person and no alcohol. So, Know you would make the same decisions they made, lose the anger, try not to change their mind, keep it just simple, you and them. And then my last point for today is, is keep it short. Like this doesn't need to be like a two hour debate about anything, about philosophy or about politics. Like if you're trying to understand them and you kind of want them to understand you, like it only really has to be like a five minute conversation, maybe a 10 minute conversation, maybe while you're having your appetizers before dinner, but keep it really short. Like just try to understand one thing tonight and then change the subject to something lighter, go watch a movie, um, talk about the kids, do something else. But there's no reason to like hash it all out tonight. Um, just keep it short. So those are my four points. First overarching principle, not even a point, is if you were them, you would make the same decision. If they were you, they would make the same decision you are. But they're not you, so that's why they didn't make the same decision you did. Um, and then make sure you're not angry. Try not to change their mind. 
keep it simple, just you and them, and keep it short, which is also part of keeping it simple. Um, so those are my initial tips. Go go try a conversation. Don't don't pick politics. Pick pick something else you disagree about, like maybe playing football. <laughs> I don't think the kids should play football. My partner does. Um, so pick a pick a difficult topic for you and your loved one, and try to have a friendly or at least understanding five or ten minute conversation. Let me know how it goes. Let me know what you would add to my list.